How would you describe your favorite smartphone? Maybe choosing the best materials available, putting in the best display in the business, and of course, USB-C. But do not forget about that killer camera system with all of those AI features. And finally, a little bit of spice, just to spice things up. And that, you just described the Samsung S24 Ultra. Yes, the Samsung S24 Ultra is the best smartphone in 2024, hands down. This is the best hardware available right now, and oh my god, I have so many good things to talk about. So if you are excited, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. This is my Samsung S24 Ultra review. Let's get started. I know this sounds weird. I'm an Apple fanboy. I'm an Apple user. I use the iPhone 15 Pro Max as my main phone. And this review is going to be very, very positive. The Samsung S24 Ultra is a beast of a phone. Currently, in my opinion, the best phone in the world. Let me explain. Yes, I do believe that the Samsung S24 Ultra is the best smartphone in the world right now, for several reasons. But in the whole package, in the complete package, the Samsung S24 Ultra is truly the best. In terms of being the best overall ecosystem device, it's not the best. In my opinion, the iPhone has that trophy. And that's why I won't switch from the iPhone to the Samsung S24 Ultra. Right away, the beginning of this review, Samsung has not convinced me to switch, but purely because of the ecosystem, not because of the phone. This is an incredible phone, with the design being very similar to the iPhone, it's made of titanium, it's a glass pack, a front flat screen, and it almost feels like the iPhone in its core, like using it, holding it in your hand. It's really similar to the iPhone, the weight distribution, everything, the balance, it's extremely premium, the materials, the balance of the weight is incredible, and everything feels worth the $1,500 or the $1,400 that you would pay for the 512 version that I have right here. So, yeah, totally worth the money in terms of the design and the materials used. And, of course, because I'm an iPhone user, I do value those things, and the Samsung did it completely right. This is an incredible feeling phone that, when you hold it, you understand what I mean. Go into a Best Buy or a Samsung store, if those exist, and hold this phone in your hand, and you will truly understand what I mean. The only thing that I don't think is the best in terms of this design is these edges right here. They are too sharp. They cut in into your hand too much. When you are holding your phone, you definitely feel it for long periods of time. And it will leave a mark on your hand, definitely. While the iPhone is a little bit more curved, and even other designs, and even the other Samsungs, they weren't this sharp. So this boxier design, I don't think it's the strength. I would prefer a different look, but at least, at least, is different from the iPhone. Nowadays, most smartphones are just converging and morphing it up in just into one singular design, one singular appearance, the Pixel 8 Pro. It had a different camera bump, yes, but in terms of feeling of the body, it was really close to the iPhone. While the Samsung is different. It has that Samsung Ultra phone feeling. Although it's not my favorite, and it's probably one of my biggest gripes with this phone, I don't mind it, and it feels extremely premium. Titanium, Insane, my favorite material ever on the phone. I want every phone now to be made out of titanium. I just love it. And of course, now that Samsung made the, the screen completely flat, I have no issues with it. But my biggest gripe with this phone is on its design. And it's a design flaw, in my opinion. It's the volume buttons. These are terrible. <laughs> Trust me, not because they are not clicky enough, not because of the way they are designed. No, they are just fine. The only problem that I find with them is that they are badly positioned. So Samsung completely missed the place that they should have put them. In my opinion, you should have the lock button in one side and the volume buttons on the other because then it will be very easy on the pocket to distinguish between a lock button and the volume buttons. What happens is, because these two buttons are now on the same side, in my pocket, whatever I'm not looking or I cannot look, I'm always locking my phone, turning on Bixby. That's the worst part, turning on Bixby. <coughs> Bixby is so bad, so much worse than the Siri, so much worse than Google Assistant. I have to change that, but I don't use my Assistant that much. But turning it off accidentally sucks. And I do it often on my iPhone, but with the hey prompt, not with the, this thing right here. So the, the lock button being on the same place as the volume button is not the best placement because I end up trying to put down the volume and locking it up the phone or turning up Bixby when I try to change the volume, or even when I lock the phone out, I just, just turn the volume down when I don't want to. So this is a bit confusing. I wish Samsung put this volume button right here. Wouldn't be that hard. Although I understand why they don't do it, because again, 
this thumb right here can, can reach both of the buttons, this and this, but because of the slightly big design of this phone, it's a 6.8 inch display, it's really tough to reach the other side of the phone with your thumb, so I understand why they might did it, but I still believe they should have put it down there, like easy, there's the some phones I put it right here, that would be easy, and you would be able to reach it with your hand. In terms of the overall ratio and aspect ratio, I don't like this taller and less wide design from the Samsung phone. I do prefer the iPhones wider and less tall because this is too big to reach with your hand. If you wanna reach the top of your display with just one hand, it's almost impossible. You like to do all of these gymnastics to reach the top of the display and it's not easy, not comfortable. So other than that, I do believe that this phone is super complete. This design is really good and is definitely worth it. The $1,500, $1,200, $1,300, whatever you pay for it, I do believe it's worth it. Uh, at least $1,500 worth. Not 60, not 17, but I do believe that this phone is worth the price that Samsung is asking. Other than that, no design flaws, no big design flaws that I can find. Sharp edges, the placement of the volume buttons, but those are mere gripes for me. But the best part of this phone is definitely, definitely the display. Now, Samsung has adopted this flat design for the display, which makes it much better with accidental touches, and in my opinion, better looking. Although there are some people that love the curved design, I was not a big fan. And that's less resistant to breaking because you have more area of contact on the ground. Makes sense. Now, Samsung made this phone much stronger, and in my opinion, better to use. So, all in all, flat screen was a great decision. Then, there's the display on itself. The display is a 6.8 inch, 2500 nit, peak brightness HDR display. An OLED dis display, of course, that can go up to 4K resolution. This is simply put, the best display in the world. And it makes sense, because Samsung produces all of the displays out there, produces the iPhone displays, produces other Android phones displays, so it makes sense that they kept the best displays for themselves. This is an incredible piece of technology in terms of displays, a bit too saturated in my opinion, I think the colors could be a bit more neutral and they could be a bit warmer. I do believe that this phone tends to over-exaggerate on the blues and it becomes a bit too cold in terms of colors in my opinion. If you compare it to the iPhone, you can see that the iPhone colors are not as bright, but they are a bit warmer. So, so they look better and they're a bit more comfortable to look at. I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. But in terms of facts and being objective, this is the best display in the world. And just like the design, totally, totally worth the $1,200, $1,300 that you are paying for. This display is also capable of 120 hertz or to ramp down to 1 hertz, 30 hertz, depending whatever you wanna use it, like on scrolling a page on Twitter, that's really 120 hertz, really fast, really smooth. Or if you are watching or reading a text or watching a movie, depending, it will adjust. If you are reading text, it will probably ramp down to 10 hertz. If you are watching a video at 30 frames per second, it will ramp down to 30 frames per second or 30 hertz in that case. So, it's a very intelligent display that allows you to have incredible, incredible battery life because it saves tons of energy with a very, very efficient optimization of the display's refresh rate. The iPhone has that, other phones have that, but the Samsung does it really, really well. Like, the Google Pixel 8 Pro has that amazing, very old refresh rate display, but it sucks. It just sucks. Most of the time it's stuck at 60 frames or stuck at 90 frames, not the full 120. And that's a problem that the Pixel has because of its battery, the optimization. It's not as powerful, the chip is not as powerful and not as efficient. So the Snapdragon Gen 3 here, or Alpha 8 Gen 3, whatever it's named, it's incredible. The AI feature are incredible. And so the battery life here is also incredible. The battery life. Funny, because I never had such good a battery life on a phone. And I've used the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I've used the iPhone 15 Pro Max for like the last four months now. And this phone is insane. The most that I could spend on this phone was like 50% in one day. So it's surely, surely a two-day phone for you. And it's an insane time because I was downloading uh, Epic Games Fortnite and it lasted like five hours or four hours downloading that video game on a screen on time, always the screen on, and I spent like 30%. <laughs> Burning through juice, this phone seeps juice. It's insane how power efficient it is. Then, of course, it's a bit less power efficient if you are playing games, or if you are doing very intensive stuff, like, I don't know, running benchmarks. In that case, then it will drain a bit faster, but I never felt this phone hot. I never felt this phone in an efficient state. No, it's just super efficient. Oh, and it has a huge battery, a 4500 or 4800 milliampere sized battery, which is huge. 
This phone is definitely a two-day phone for you. And then, then there's another upside for this phone, and that's the fast charging. This phone supports 45 watt fast charging, something that most phones do have, but the iPhone doesn't have. And that's something that you actually value when you are in a hurry. You need to charge up or top up really quickly and just do it on your Samsung. No, it isn't good for your battery, but once in a while, it actually is a nice feature. Although 45 watt is not as the fastest in the business, though there's faster charging phones like the Oppo, like the OnePlus, I do believe that the Samsung phone just do it fast enough. 45 watt, good enough, and it doesn't completely destroy and wreck your battery health in the long run. So I do believe that's a very important feature because Samsung has promised seven years of support to the Samsung S24 Ultra and S24 family. So seven years of support, we are now in 2024, seven years of support, that's 2031. That's insane. <laughs> that's insane support, guys. Like if, if Samsung delivers, this is going to be a huge thing. As for the other phones, Android phones, you pay less, but you get way less support. Security updates, software updates, Android updates, you can count them with three fingers, all of those. Well, the iPhone, it does a great job. Apple always does a great job with that, so I don't worry about the iPhone software updates, six, seven years. More than that, you just want to upgrade your device. It becomes old, becomes very slow, and probably the storage and the RAM are just outdated at that point. So yeah, seven years of support for the Samsung, that's just crazy. And all of this is just possible because of that amazing, amazing chip. But the biggest news is not the power, nor the efficiency of this Snapdragon chip, which for the first time in a while is faster than the A17 Pro chip. But that's not the main point about this Snapdragon chip. No, it's actually the AI features. That's something that I was like, that's a completely a gimmick. That's a gimmick that no one will use, right? Wrong, I was totally wrong. In the first three days that I've used these AI features, I'm hooked, especially the Google circle feature. To search things up on Google, you just circle things up. This is the best thing that Samsung has invented in the last 10 years. I know it's not just Samsung and the Google Pixel 8 Pro will have this feature and in the iPhone in the next year or so, we'll add up this feature, but I'm so hooked with this. I see a new pair of shoes in the wild, I just take a photo, I circle them, I can buy them on Amazon or other stores. I see an iPhone, I see a house, I see someone famous that I don't know the name, just take the picture, circle it up on the phone, done, can search it up. This is so great. And even on a YouTube video, even on a web page, even on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever you want to search, just make a circle on top of it on your screen. That's it. Google will tell you what it is. This is an evolution of Google Lens and it's so good. I cannot go back to something that does not have this. Please, Apple, make it fast, add it fast. This is so, so good. As for the other AI features, they are good. You can summarize notes, you can translate things. Those are very basic stuff. One thing that is pretty cool is the AI editor on your Samsung gallery. That's pretty cool. Almost very similar to the Google Pixel 8 Pro magic editor tool, really simple. You select stuff, you can delete them, you can remove them from pictures, you can move them side to side, change their position on the photo. And then after that, you will get this AI pop-up on the bottom left corner, telling you that this is the AI modified image. So pretty nice, giving you a watermark to let you know this is an AI modified image. You can also generate wallpapers, which is refreshing because some phones, especially with the iPhone, I get bored of the wallpaper. I need to go online and search cool wallpapers for the iPhone and then download some random wallpaper. While this one can generate different wallpapers and it won't get bored, as simple as that. Cameras, they seem to be the main focus of every smartphone these days. And if you think about it, it actually makes tons of sense. If you think about it, the main improvements that you saw in the last three years on smartphones have been on the camera side. And maybe because of the rest of the phone is extremely mature, the displays, the design, the, the ports, everything else is extremely mature and very, very much the same. But the cameras is somewhere where you see good improvements every single year. Is it on the zoom? On the video side, the photo side, this megapixel count on the sensor, the size of the sensor, every single of these factors evolve each generation. And the Samsung S24 Ultra is no different. It has better cameras than the Samsung S23 Ultra. But here's something that you are probably not expecting. The Samsung S24 Ultra features a worse, not being factually, but a subjectively worse camera than the Samsung S23 Ultra, if your main focus is zooming. 
because this phone replaced the 10X telephoto camera on the Samsung S23 Ultra with a 5X but 50 megapixel telephoto camera on this phone. Just like the iPhone 15 Pro Max now, the Samsung S23 Ultra features a 5X telephoto. So you are probably thinking, why? Why did Samsung do that? Why did they replace a 10X telephoto if their main focus of the camera system is the zooming capabilities? Well, easy. They put a 50 megapixel telephoto. So what that means is you can crop in on that telephoto like two times, three times without losing that much quality. So you can create a 20x optical zoom without losing that much of a quality, just like Apple does it with the 2x button on the iPhone. So a 48 megapixel sensor crops in into a 24 megapixel shot, while this 50 megapixel sensor can crop in into a 12 megapixel shot, and then that would be the optical zoom. Further than that, it's a digital zoom and so losing quality. Has for the 10X on the Samsung S23 Ultra, it was a 12 megapixel, so it wasn't as good as this 50 megapixel. But if you compare them side to side, I did not review the Samsung S23 Ultra, but I did review the Samsung S22 Ultra. And the differences are really, really small. Maybe I saw other reviewers and the photos looked a bit different. I don't know, but if, the, if you notice any difference, they are really small. But why did they do that? Why did they sacrifice the 10X telephoto for a 5X telephoto? Simple, because now you have a better zoom range from 3x to 5x, it's a digital crop. So from 3 to 5, because you have a 3x telephoto here, instead of the iPhone's only 5x telephoto, you have 3x here, and you have the 3x and you have the 5x. So the zoom range that is digital is from 3x to 5x. I've explained this in other videos, and especially when I compare smartphone cameras against my mirrorless cameras. When you have a zoom lens on a mirrorless camera from, for example, 18 to 105, this zoom range, this focal length, is covered with non-digital crop. So it's an optical crop, it's an optical zoom. You don't lose any quality. Well, with the smartphone lenses, you do, because they are prime lenses, they are not zoom lenses. They cannot change their aperture, their length, to create an effect of more focal length. No, they just are prime lenses. And so between the 5X, the 3X, the 1X, and the 0.6X on this S24 Ultra, this is all digital crop. So Samsung tried to reduce as much the digital crop as possible. B before, the difference was between 3x and 10x, and all of the zoom range between these two was a digital crop. It wasn't that great. While with the S24 Ultra, that problem is fixed. The only digital crop is between the 3 and 5x. Longer than that, you have a 50 megapixel telephoto that can pump out incredible photos, especially between the 5x and 20x telephoto zoom shot. Other than that, start to get a bit grainy is just scumbag zoom at that point. I focused a lot of this camera review on the zoom because I do believe it's the biggest feature here. The still photos are good, the HDR photos are good, especially when compared to the iPhone it can go toe to toe with the best camera system in the world in my opinion. And then on the night photography side it's also really good and does something that I really enjoy. It doesn't overblow the mid-tones. The iPhone when it started to take a photo at night does something that actually I notice now and it bothers me. It cranks up the mid-tones. It makes the photo look brighter. If you go into your photo editing of choice and you crank up the mid-tones, you will see that the picture gets brighter. Whenever you adjust the brightness of the photo, you are adjusting the mid-tones. And the iPhone does that a lot with nighttime photos. While the Samsung decides for a darker look, but a more natural look, with the colors being darker, but more lifelike, better. And at least better looking at the eye. That's my opinion for the nighttime photography, but that completely disappears whenever you talk about video. Low light video, nighttime video, daylight video. I'm gonna stop you right there. Take a look at this. While I was editing this video, I just found this glitch on the video of the Samsung S24 Ultra. Whenever I tried to put the video on the editor Final Cut Pro, the first three frames just cut. Take a look at this. I never seen anything like this. I don't know if it's a bug from Android or Samsung side, but let me know in the comments below what you think this is. Quite annoying for me to edit. The Samsung S24 Ultra's video is worse in every single scenario when compared to the iPhones. And so here's the biggest catch with the Samsung S24 Ultra. If you do value social media, if you do value video, and especially you do value sharing video on social media, then the iPhone is the only choice because developers, they focus a lot on their apps for iOS. And so the Android apps of these same developers, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, the photos and the stories will never look as good as they were took on their phone. That's why the iPhone beats 
all of these devices and the Samsung S24 Ultra 2 sharing photos and videos on social media. So if you value that a lot, I'm sorry, but the iPhone is a much, much better option. While if you don't really care about that, this is still a great camera system. I don't think this is the best camera system in the world. Although I do still believe that this is the best phone in the world, I don't think this is the best camera system in the world. The iPhone has a better camera because it has a better video camera and a better photo camera overall. This has more features. This has that scumbag zoom. The iPhone has better still photos, although at night I do prefer the Samsung and especially the video. The video gap is so big, so big in terms of quality that the iPhone's camera just has to win. And so the Samsung at the end of the day has a great, great camera system, but it's not the best in the world. As for the rest, it's still incredible. And this phone is all about the hardware, not just the software. Although the software has been getting better and better and better, Samsung has been working with Google to make this a better integration. You can still notice a lot of struggle between these two devices. You have two different apps for everything. You have a Samsung Gallery, Google Photos. You have your browser from Samsung and Google Chrome. You have so much bloat and all the problems that come with Android. I don't like Android in and out of itself. It, it, it doesn't bother me to use Android, but I don't like it as much as iOS. I much prefer like using macOS over Windows than using iOS over Android. I can deal with Android. I can use it day to day, but I notice that I'm not as efficient. I'm not as prepared to deal with day to day problems. And I'm just better at work with iOS and day to day life is just easier. So that's one of the reasons why I won't switch to the Samsung S24 Ultra, that and the camera. Other than that, I do believe this phone is superior to every single phone out there. Currently, the design, the screen especially, the battery life, USB-C, all the features that you get with the AI, this is an incredible package and the Samsung S24 Ultra is totally worth the money. So if you are thinking of buying the Samsung S24 Ultra, you are coming from other Android phones, this is just the best choice out there. One thing that you need to keep in mind is this phone is expensive. Yes, having the best hardware in the world comes at a price. This phone starts at $1,300 with 256 gigabytes of storage and then goes up for $1,500 for 512 and $1,800 for one terabyte of storage, if I'm not wrong. That's a very expensive phone, even more expensive than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So be sure that you have the money to buy it. But at the end of the day, I do believe it's totally, totally worth it. So if you enjoy the Samsung S24 Ultra, let me know in the comments down below. I've used this phone the last week and I loved it, but it's time for it to go back. I will be returning this phone at the end of the month. I'm not keeping it. I will not switch from my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.